Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And today we are making a boho inspired winter or Christmas front door wreath or wreath for anything that you would like. So here are the supplies. This is all from the Dollar Tree. Now, this one specifically is not, but they do sell paddle wire. I just happen to have my own. Um, I got these, which are called Frosted Greenery. These are also called Frosted Greenery, but they have the berries. I think I got them in white as well. Um, there's a lot of fallout. I got the nautical rope, the 11 foot. You can use any one you want, but if you want to use the measurements that I'm using, like how many pieces I use, I use the 11.1 foot. It's a little thinner. Am I, you need two to do this. I got one package of the brass wreath, the brass wreath rings. You're gonna use two pieces of that, but you'll need the one package of that and then any ribbon that you want. I bought this at the Dollar Tree. I probably got this last year. However, I'm choosing to use some other ribbons that I have. I think these came from uh, Michael's if I had to guess. So we have that, and then, you know, your scissors, a hot glue gun, some wire cutters, and your rings. So let me pull up what I got and show you how I'm doing Okay, it. first things first. I took the 11 foot nautical rope, or any rope that you have, yarn, anything. I cut the one plastic end off. I'm not gonna do it on this because it will unravel. And I literally unraveled to get three independent strings. You definitely want to tie a knot. Like when I, I left the top um, tape together, the bottom, when I unraveled them, I tied a knot and then I separated all the way to the top. And then I tied all three in the top. Hold on one second. Wellington needs me. So you get three long pieces of the rope. You wanna keep them knotted until you're ready. So I have three here. I used one whole one, and this is what I have left of the second one, and I did the big ring and the medium ring. This is the small ring. I just wanna show you how I tied it on. And you can do any macrame you want. What I did is I took it and I just tied a knot, basic knot, and anybody in my generation, if you did friendship bracelets, you're gonna, this is gonna show right away what I did. Just tied it on, wherever, it doesn't matter. Just a start. Now, I leave that piece here and I make a number four. So I go out here and over the ring. Then I take my extra under the ring and through the hole. So I'm just tying it on pull it up and tie a knot. I don't even know what the knot is called. Then I pull it tight. So you make your number four. You come with this loose stuff over the top, under, through that hole, through this hole, and it just ties you a knot. There are lots of different ways that you can tie these knots. I saw one on Pinterest where they used a half hitch knot uh, from macrame. There's lots of videos on that. So again, this is the last time I'm gonna show you this. You go over and back. So it's both these pieces are over the top. And then this one goes through the middle, under, through this hole, and you pull it up and it gives you the loop. For the knot and you just go all the way around and what will happen when you go all the way around is your knot twists and I just made sure it was twisting even it's free twisting now and I've covered the whole ring in a macrame and I did both the big and the little now start and finish what I did at the beginning and at the end is I hot glued it and I used, I have two of these from the Dollar Tree. They're just silicone. And then I held it in place because you really wanna get that glue knot 
flat. So on the front, you don't notice it. Um, on this particular one, the middle size, it took one whole piece of the 11 and then a little piece of not of the 11. Now on the big one, I did the same thing. It took two full, uh, two full pieces. So then what I want to do is see the side here that looks the roughest where I glued it and I want to put them together just to hide them. So I have my glue gun going, but what I want to do first off is I want to attach these together. You know what I mean? So I want to find into the knots and just get them to snug up against each other right here because I'm going to take some wire and I'm gonna really do a good job. You, you can use hot glue for this, but it's kind of heavy. So I'm gonna say it's not the best option, but that is only my personal opinion. Um, on, on that, I'm gonna leave a long tail over here because I'm gonna twist it off at the end. Now, I'm gonna also, I wanna flip it over. So I wanna work from the back. The reason you can leave your wire on the paddle is you can really get a good pull without cutting your finger with the wire. So you tighten it and see how my hand is kind of holding it like this. I can do a good pull to tighten it and then I just wrap it around and do a good tight. You just really want this tight around here so you don't have a lot of play in the wire. And I'm gonna go one more time. This is a personal preference again. Then I just take my wire nips. I know a lot of people use regular scissors. That's, that's not my life, so just so you know. And then I'm gonna tie these or twist this off. Again, you want it pretty tight. Now, keeping in mind what you're t what you're pushing this up against as far as like a door or a wall you don't want that wire open to cutting things so i just tuck it in and here we have it now if you see it kind of feeds it's it'll drop down but it, when it's upright like that it's not going to go anywhere so we're going to go back to the front side I will need more wire. And in this point, I'm gonna need some hot glue. So let me tidy this up. What I'm gonna do next is cut the greenery. And I'm just, I'll show you one, but I'm gonna do it so I can clean it up. I'm cutting them as long as I can cut them. And then on here, you wanna take this off. And then sometimes I will go ahead and fluff it, but I have a bunch to cut. So give me a second. All right, I got everybody cut. I cut two of the green and one each of the red and white. I'm gonna put the green plane down as my base. I do have plenty of glue. And then at the end, we'll probably do a ribbon around it. But what I would like to do first is just kind of lay out my green, how I want it to start. So right here is where I want it to start. And you just like, this is gonna be the base right there. So I will take some glue and you really want your base down, right? Because, oops. This is how it's all, let me see here. There we go. You just wanna be able to get it into the glue. And I use this silicone here because it doesn't stick on it. And if anything strings like that just did, just ignore it. And we'll get it after, there we go. So I got my first piece down. And I got that glue. And that's all we're gonna do is continue to build outward. So I definitely want to thicken this up. So I may say, well, hey, let's put some here or I can go right in the center. Just kind of wanna mess around with it 
and know where you want it to go. And then I just get it in there and get some glue attached in the middle. Once I get it in the spot that I would like it. Same thing over here. And the great thing is these are on wire um, stems. So you just bend them in the direction that you would like them to go. So if you'd like them to kind of curve, they can curve just like that. And I need to let it dry a little bit in between because you really want it to stick. And then I'm gonna take some wire to hold these a little extra in place, but I'm not quite done. I want one more. I really would like this to go far and down. I'm just gonna see how I'm doing that. I'm just gonna bend it so it takes the curve of the rings. And I'm just gluing the tip in there. So I'm gonna take another long one. I'm gonna kind of curve it that way. And then I want it to go right there. Oop, I touched it. But once it's been glued for a hot minute, you don't really have to worry too much about it. And then I'm doing a lot of glue in the middle. Because I feel like, ooh, that is it um, for this plain green. And then I'm going to do like probably a small red and white, a small red and white. And then we're going to wire it. So let's together. So I have these two here that are short red and white. And I really just want them to go in the center there. And then in this situation, because of the amount of glue that is happening right now, I'm just going to wire it and turn it. And then we're gonna go under that way, under that way. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And do one more, pull it and turn it. And that's just really gonna help with the glue, how the glue is holding it as well. And then you really twist tie it just like you would like a bread tie. And you really wanna get it a couple times around and push it down in there and then I can mess with the colors but I just really wanted it to be pretty plain and then I'm going to do a pretty bow and I'll show you my bow after we do this and again white and let's twist them around on this side and do the opposite the white and the red opposite of each other I love floral wire guys it's so versatile i bought that at michael's i don't even know how many years ago and just one of them will last you a long time now the dollar tree stuff works fine too i just happen to have bought that stuff somewhere else okay and then i'm just gonna twist it twist it cut it and that okay I have the red the one thing I want to do before I make a bow is I just want to cover that center so now I'm doing red and black this year as a theme in my house so of course these colors all match so what I want to do is just glue it in place. I'm going to take this front side right there. Yeah, it gets a little messy, but it's okay. I wonder if I can get this to go around twice. I don't know. Well, yeah, I can. Perfect. Because that will really also help 
in holding it in place. Because I'm not gonna tie the ribbon, the bow actually around, right? I'm just gonna make the bow and glue it down. Okay, let's see. <gasps> Guys, I'm so happy now. One thing we want to do now that everybody is wired in place is just kind of fluff it like you do, right? But isn't that fun? Okay, next stop. I'm going to clean this up and we're going to make a bow. Okay, I took the ribbon, two different rib ribbons. You can literally use any ribbon you want. And then I have some Baker's Twine. They sell this at the Dollar Tree too. And I cut two long strips just to have it ready. What you want to make is like a remembrance ribbon. You know, like for cancer or whatever. You just want to make this shape. And then I lay that flat. And I say, okay, well, that's how big I want my bow to be. However large it is. Now, since I'm doing two bows together. I'm also going to do the same thing with this bow, but I might make this a little smaller since I want it to go here, right? And then you just crunch it up, literally crunch it up between your fingers. Take your string I go around it twice just so it holds it. Baker's twine is a little stronger. And then I'm just tying it off in the back. A nice tight bow. I don't know if that was even or not, but we can fix that by pulling this tail. There we go. And now we're perfect. I mean, I say perfect, but we look good. Tie it once, tie it twice. That is going to keep that knot. Tie it 10 times. It doesn't matter. You just want your bow to knot, to knot, um, come untied. Fluff it up. And I'll re-fluff it when I put it on. But the one thing I do want to do is oh, I just dovetail the ends um, on here, right? You just kind of want them to be similar in size. So I just fold it. And if you don't know, cutting it longer is going to be better than cutting it short because you can't make it longer, but you can certainly make it shorter. So I just cut off a little bit and you can mess with it and fluff it up and then we're going to attach it. So I'll bring, I will bring my wreath back and we're going to attach it. Now at this point, you could have it hang like that and, oops, sorry, you could have it hang upwards and tie your bow at the bottom, which, you know, I like that. You could hang it this way, tie your bow over here, or you can do it this way, or you can even do it from the top down. I'm liking this way, right? So I'm gonna tie my bow at the bottom. Comes, uh, here I'm gonna do it this direction. Come winter time after Christmas, if I decide that I wanna leave this out, I might change the bow to a blue and make it like a winter wreath and not Christmas wreaths. You can hang bells from here at the bottom and or the top. You can do anything you want. This is just my take on a boho, Christmassy, wintry, heck, you could do this in the summertime. It doesn't matter. It's just a boho wreath that we are going to do one thing. First, we're going to turn it over. I know it's going to be upside down for you, but you won't be able to see it if it isn't. And we're going to fluff everybody up. 
and make sure it's centered properly, which, let's see. It looks to me like it is. So you could hang something from here and it will dangle in the center or you can just leave it. I'm just gonna leave it, but I am gonna flip it back over and put a dab of hot glue on my knot and just let it dry. And the next time you see it, it'll be hung on my door and we are so excited. All right, guys, here she is in all of her Christmas glory. I am very impressed with the Dollar Tree products and how I was able to create something so simple yet so beautiful. So I hope you took some inspiration and you create one of your very own. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.